All right, guys, it's Dave Dean here. And before we get uh, started on this review, I just want to say if we hit 500 likes on this review video of Fio's Q11, I will be giving this away to somebody that has subscribed to my channel and liked the video. And you have to actually send me the screenshot of those two things, right? So liking the review video and subscribing to my channel, take screenshots of that, and you can send that to car audio horizons at gmail.com. Once again, that's car audio horizons at gmail.com. You send me the screenshot of you liking the review video, and you send me the screenshot of you being subscribed. And I can check to see if you're subscribed, right? Once we get to 500 likes on the video, then I will pick somebody, do a random draw, and uh, somebody will get this sent to them. Uh, I pay for the shipping regardless of whether where it's going. So it can go anywhere. I'll be paying for the shipping part of it, right? So that's it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the review. I appreciate if you like and subscribe to the video. And uh, this is probably going to be something that's going to be happening going forward with all my reviews. All right, without further ado, here's the review. All right, guys, it's Dave Dean back with another review. And I have Fio's Q11 hooked up in my car audio system. And uh, before I start this review, I just wanna say a big thank you to Fio for actually sending me this product in order to review it. So a big thanks to them. And without further ado, let's start the review, right? So. I'm going to kind of go over the accessories that it comes with. Obviously, I've already unboxed this unit. You can see uh, Fio's box there. They kind of change their colors a little bit. You got It's kind of like a bluish uh, gray. I don't mind it. It looks pretty decent, right? And then inside that box where the unit's stored, you can see it here. And this is just your basic standard uh, uh, Fio cardboard, cardboard box like they normally uh, uh, have in some of their other units, right? So what it comes with, right? So... It's got a fairly longer cable, your regular like USB to USB-C cable, right? It's a decent size, uh, decent cable. And then we got the shorter version, which is a USB-C to USB-C cable. And then we have your lightning to USB-C cable, right? And I also tested this unit. You guys, if you've watched some of my other reviews before in the past, uh, I've also used this with the iPhone which is basically just the USB uh, lightning camera adapter, right? And I also have the other version, just not with me. It's at my house uh, that I used with the iPad too. And it's basically just the USB-C version of this, right? Uh, but you don't need those. Uh, that's just what I tested this with. And as you can see right now, I just have an Apple USB-C, uh, longer cable to hook this into. But any of those cables work, uh, no problems whatsoever, right? So how I have this hooked up right now in my system you can see in the top right hand corner, you'll see uh, this is either 3.5 out or you can use it as a coaxial digital out, right? So right now I'm using it as a coaxial digital output. Uh, you can see if anybody's had a FIO DAP or anything uh, like that in the past, you'll you'll recognize that cable. That's the 3.5 to coaxial adapter, right? And that's hooked into my AudioQuest Cinnamon coaxial digital out, which runs to the back of my system and is hooked into a Helix DSP Ultra, right? And then beside that is the 4.4 output, uh, balanced output. And uh, right now you can see this is a 4.4 to female balanced adapter, which then actually goes into a twisted pair of, uh, well, the ones I'm using right now is a Rockford Fosgate twisted pair RCAs that run like I said, to the back of my Helix DSP Ultra. So for those of you that don't know, uh, the Helix DSP Ultra has differential balanced inputs. So I can run a balanced signal out of this and go straight into that um, using these two cables, right? Um, we're gonna get back to that in a bit. Uh, same thing with the coaxial adapter part of it we're going to get back to that in a little bit too as well so then basically beside that which uh you can see that little 
button there. That's just your high low gain. And then you got uh, the volume on off and control the volume with that knob right there, right? And then, like I said, on the, the bottom of the unit right there is just your regular uh, USB-C, right? Which is basically kind of almost caught that right there on the screen, right? So the first thing I want to talk about uh, right away, because uh, sometimes I like to get the, the bad stuff out right off the bat with this unit. Um, so I don't know if anybody's familiar with this, but this is a feel control app. Now, normally you can use this like uh, for when I did the review on the BTR7, you can use that with that, right? For whatever reason, this app does not work with this unit, right? Um, I don't know why that is, but it is what it is, right? So this unit comes shipped with the coaxial digital output off. And the only way that you can turn it on is if you have an Android device, right? I'm going to repeat that one more time. The only way you can switch the coaxial digital output on on this unit is if you have an Android device with that app downloaded on it because it will not work with any Apple products right now. I don't know why that is, but it is what it is. I do not have any Android devices at my house other than the Fio M17. If I didn't have that Fio M17, I wouldn't be able to turn this thing on. I'd have to actually go to the store, buy an Android tablet or something like that, and then go in the settings and change it with the Fio control app. That's a really big negative for me because why would you have a unit that's capable of doing something but for people that just have Apple, you have no way of unlocking it, right? So that's the first kind of, uh, honestly, it's the first and only gripe I have with this product, but it's kind of a big gripe for people in the car audio community, right? Not so much uh, if you're using this with headphones, you're never going to encounter that. But uh, for people in the car, car audio community, a lot of them love coaxial digital out, right? With their products that they're using. So Fio, if you're listening to this, Let's find a better way of doing things like this because to me, it's kind of unacceptable. If you if your product has certain things on it, I don't care what you got to do, put a separate coaxial digital output on, the, on your products, right? That solves everything. That way people aren't running around trying to find these adapters, which are like almost impossible to find anymore, right? And um, then they can use some of the functions of your actual unit. So that 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 right there is a big problem for me. Uh, and I'm kind of seeing a trend right now. And I don't know why that is because the M11S never came with this adapter. And it was the first DAP that feels shipped since I've, you know, in the last like six years of them making DAPs. That was the first time that it shipped without that cord. Everybody in the car car audio community loves coaxial digital out. So let's let's you know nobody else is doing this on their units. You did it with the M17. Let's do it with all your products going forward. That would be fantastic, right? All right. That being aside, we're gonna get into kind of you know the reason why I have this thing set up the way it is, right? Um so like I said, I went into the Fio M17, downloaded the app on it, switched the coaxial digital load on here uh, after I tested the 3.5 out of it, right? Um, with the 3.5, I'm just going to say right away, the 3.5 output, it's not as good as using the balanced output, whether you're using headphones or whatnot. Balance is always going to be better. Uh, pretty much on everything, right? It's just a better, you get more dynamics, uh, your crosstalk's higher, right? If you go look at, uh, um, if you go look at basically the specs on this thing, you're going to see the crosstalks, you know, like 104 or 107 or something like that, as opposed to if you're just going, uh, using the PO 3.5 out of there, you're going to see it's a lot lower, right? Uh, in the specs. 
So that, that's a big thing. It helps you separate the, the, you know, the instruments and it makes the music more dynamic, right? And uh, to me, it was qu quite noticeable on this product using headphones and in the car, right? Especially in the car where I have a pretty high-end system, you're, you're kind of hearing what this product's capable of, right? And definitely how I have it set up right here with the 4.4 balanced out of this thing, it, it definitely made a huge difference in my vehicle, right? So we'll start off with the coaxial digital out. And, um, you know, some of you guys might have watched my review I did uh, recently on the SMSL PO100 Pro, right? And um, that was an excellent, like if you're just going digital out, you know, with your phone, your your iPad, or your Android device, that's that really works well, especially for that was seventy nine dollars uh, uh, Canadian, right? Same thing with this. Um, this unit I think is going on for like seventy nine eighty nine dollars. Uh, I think that's U.S. though, so I think this in Canada is probably around uh, ninety nine dollars or somewhere around there. Don't quote me on that because I haven't seen it. Um, I haven't seen this on Amazon in Canada. I've only seen it in the US, right? In the US, I think they had a special going on uh, for like $79.99, but I think its original price is $89.99 US, right? So it's probably about $109, you know, $100, $109, $120, somewhere around that area in, in, in Canadian dollars, right? So obviously this unit does a lot more than the SMSL PO100 Pro, right? So but the coaxial digital output, when I was listening to music on that, it does a decent job of it, right? Um, but I would say the SMSL PO100 Pro does a far better job, right? When we're just talking coaxial digital out. Um, but where this unit really shines, right? Uh, and I listened, like I said, I've listened to this unit for the last two weeks. And uh, the first couple of days I was using the 3.5 out of this thing, right? Before I switched over to Coaxial Digital. And um, I was using my AudioQuest 3.5 uh, to RCA, right? That's what I was using that cable in my system. And it and it sounded good um, and I had no problems with it, but it doesn't really do anything with the sound I found. It was more um, pretty neutral sound coming out of this unit, right? And even when I switched over to the Quaxual digital output and I listened to that for quite a few days, it was it was kind of the same sound signature as the 3.5 out of there. And I find that a lot with uh, Feels products. You get kind of a, even when you go Quaxual digital out, you, you get kind of the same sound signature uh, as you do going out of the 3.5. Or, you know, the balance changes things a little bit, right? But um for the most part, you get that the same kind of sound signature. And I didn't mind the sound signature, actually. It was pretty decent for the most part. But I would say, like, through the 3.5 and the coaxial digital output, I didn't feel, like, the weight of the music, right? Like I would with, obviously, like, you know, feel M17 or even the uh, the M11 Plus LTD that I also did a review on before. The, that that product has a lot more weight to it. But then again, this, this unit's around a hundred bucks, right? Canadian dollars. And you know, the Fio M17 is like $2,500 Canadian dollars, right? And then the M11 plus LTD was like a thousand dollars Canadian. So I wasn't expecting the same sound as that, but this actually for the money, it sounded actually really good for how much this actual unit cost right but if you're going coaxial digital out just remember the you know the issue with the android thing and then also remember that sml po 100 pro just came out and that does an excellent job if you just want something to plug your phone in your ipad in and get a either an optical or coaxial digital out right or even the i2s out on there if you have something that you can connect that with um but where this unit really shines is the actual going balanced out of this thing. Remember, guys, if you don't have a differential balanced inputs on your DSP, 
then this isn't going to work for you. You're not going to be able to do it. Right. Um, but I found once I connected that to this, it made a big difference, right? That is by far, um, I would say the best way to use this product if you were going to use it in your car, but just remember you have to have once again, differential balanced inputs on your DSP in order to use this. And then there's a, there's a lot that goes into that too, because um, then you got to set your gains on the, like for me on the Helix DSP Ultra, I literally had to remove the panel on it, which isn't, I mean, it's not hard, but it's time consuming, right? Especially if your DSP is in a place where it's hard to get to. So I literally had to, you know, unscrew the back where the RCAs are. You got to pop that panel off. And then the other panel slides off and then, with the Helix DSP Ultra, you can independently change the gains of each analog input um, on there, right? And for balanced, it works a little bit different. It's not like you can just play like a thousand, you know, kilohertz test tone through there, and that's going to show you where it clips at. Uh, it'll show you where it clips at, but then when you actually go and play music on there, that's going to change. Uh, which I found out when I was using this unit, right? Um, but I'm not going to go into that whole section because everybody's vehicle out there is totally different. Total different amps, totally different DSPs. Um, some of you guys don't even have differential inputs on your DSPs, right? Um, so this isn't going to work for you guys anyways. But there's just too much to go over with. So please don't ask me a question in the comments about that because it's really it's a really time-consuming process. And it actually, to actually tell people you ought to do this and you got to do that, it takes a long time. And especially if you don't, you have got to list all your equipment you have and so on and so forth. Just talk to your installers, but you know, a lot of your installers probably aren't even going to know that anyways. Um, the top guys will, but the majority of the people will be like, huh, what are you talking about? Uh, most of them won't even know you can actually even do that. Right. But once I actually did set that up, I was like, wow, this, this unit, you know, around a hundred dollars is pretty impressive, right? When you're using, you know, for me, when I was testing the iPad out and the iPhone, it sounded actually really, really good, right? And um, so to me, and then of course, through headphones, you're gonna use balanced out anyways, right? That's the way to go. Um, by far, this unit sounds best balanced in your headphones and then even balanced in your vehicle. Those are the best two ways to use this actual unit right? So sound quality wise, like I said, it kind of changed from the 3.5 output to the Quactual, even that sound signature was pretty similar. It, it stayed a little bit the same way with the balance, but the balance just brought out more life. There was a, it was a little bit more weighty. The dynamics of the music was, you know, far superior than the other two ways that I listened to this unit, right? And, um, like I said, still the 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 sound signature of this unit is pretty neutral for the most part, right? It's not really doing anything um, with the coloring of the sound, right? It's a little bit more laid back, I would say. Um, but using the balanced out on this thing, it it it, it kind of brings it to life, right? And it's the best way to use this unit in a vehicle if you have balanced differential inputs on your DSP. If you don't, just forget about everything I said about that, right? Um, if you don't, then then obviously, yeah, coaxial digital would be the next best thing, right? If you have a coaxial digital input on it, right? Um, if you don't, then you're kind of stuck with the 3.5 out and um, it's decent, right? It's it, it's okay, but uh, uh, for, the, for the price, I think it's, doing a really good job, right? Even out of the 3.5 for the price of this unit. Uh, but if you compare it to some of the other, um, I would say like some of the other dongle DAX and stuff like that, that I've, that I've heard, like, you know, the Hades, uh, S9 Pro was pretty, a pretty decent dongle DAC. Um, I've tested, uh, audio Quest, you know, once in, you know, in the past and whatnot. Uh, the, this one, I, I would say, is kind of closer to like maybe an audio quest um dragonfly right um cobalt even the cobalt it's probably similar to that i guess 
Um, but if you're going balanced out of this thing, I think this kind of blows away those two units or those three units, depending on which one uh, you've you've had maybe in the past. I think it, it blows away the Cobalt. It blows away the Dragon Quest. Obviously, the Blacks, like their entry-level one. So it's far better than that. Um, using the balance to... But if you're using the 3.5 out, like I said, it's 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 okay, but it's nothing spectacular, right? You definitely want to use balanced with this with this particular unit, right? Um, so the base, I'll start and kind of go through like I normally do with the base, and this is going to be based on balanced, right? Um, how I've used it uh, in the car for the majority of the time, the last like probably week and a bit has been balanced. And I would, I would say, you, like I said, you get a little bit more weight um, when you're using the balanced output. Uh, the dynamics are there. But, but base-wise, I think it does a really good job in the base department, right? Um, it, it, it's, it's pretty tight. Uh, you, get, you get a pretty good impact, right? It's not, um, it's not as, you know, it's not boomy like you, you probably would get from a lot of these type of products that are in like the $100 range. You get more of a boomier base to it. Um, this is pretty accurate. It's, it's pretty detailed. You get a pretty good impact there, right? Um, it's not as fast as like, you know, an M17, but nothing else is that I've tested to date, right? And uh, then transitioning into the mid base, uh, the mid bass, I thought it did a really good job with the mid bass, like um, kind of the audio frogs really kind of came to life with this unit. I thought it did a, like an excellent job. It's not as impactful as, you know, and as deep as something like a, a FIO M11 plus LTD. But then once again, that's 10 times the price of this unit, right? But it still did an excellent job in the mid bass. And, uh, and then coming into the mids, the, the vocals, uh, male and female, were both really good. Um, I would say, I would say like even the majority of the field products I test, they, they tend to do a really good job in the vocal area, I would say. A lot of the, a lot of the units, you know, pretty much almost everything I've tested has always did a pretty good job with the vocals. The M11S, I would say probably out of all the products that I've tested, wasn't as good in, in that area, which was kind of surprising to me. It still did a good job, don't get me wrong. But when you compare like the price to that, to some of the other products that I've tested that are in the you know a lower price bracket, like something like this, um, it sh the M11S should have did a far better job than what it did, right? Um, and this, this does a... Once again, it does a really good job uh, uh, in the mids area. And then when you get into the higher range on this product, um, far better, like I said, because we're talking about balanced right now. It did a far better job of separating the, the instruments. Um, I could really pick them up, you know, on the sides. Like when something's panning, when I'm playing a song and something's kind of like panning, like say... Uh, um, Joe Satriani's Silver Surfer, when it's just flying across in certain parts of the song, flying across your dash, it was really noticeable in the balanced mode as opposed to Coaxial Digital Out or the 3.5 Out, right? Um, I just noticed that quite a bit more, right? Um, but that's when that higher crosstalk is probably going into effect right there. The separation is just a lot more noticeable smoother right um and overall like i said i have no complaints whatsoever when i was going balanced out of this thing it, it especially for like around a hundred dollars this unit it did it it did an excellent job right and uh, i'll probably bring another video out where i uh, demo a few songs on here and i'll probably do that at night so then you can see the color change um right you'll be able to see the color change because right now you can see like blue on there but it'll actually switch uh and it's a pretty good section uh that'll kind of switch over depending on um what the sampling frequency of the song is right so if you're going like you know 48 24 to 48 uh or if you go higher you know you go 24 96 or 24 192 this will actually change color on here and it's got a pretty decent uh 
size for the color to see it, right? As opposed to some of the other uh, units that I've seen that just have like a tiny little dot on it, right? Or that maybe the volume wheel color lights up or whatnot on some of the other units I've seen. So I think this does a better job with that for being able to see it. Um, but that's probably more something that you'd use with the headphones. In a car, this is probably going to be hidden somewhere anyways, right? If you're using it for the most part. Uh, the only, I would say the only other kind of like if you're using it this in your car and then you were taking it out uh the, the tough part about that is when you actually set the gain analog gains on there you got to know exactly where you put your volume at right so that would be a little bit more difficult um to do if you're using this in your car and then using it with headphones right uh because you got to remember exactly where you put that on there right and um if it had some kind of a digitalized like volume where it said, you know, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, or something like that, then you could set it accordingly to that. But this doesn't have that, right? It's just a knob. Um, so that would be a little bit more difficult if you're using it for in your car and at home with your headphone set up, right? Uh, but overall, guys, just, you know, Fio brought out another, uh, you know, really good product. Um, I'm always pretty, you know, impressed with the more budget oriented products that come out that have like, you know, that sound good. Right. And, uh, you know, when something else comes out, <laughs> I'm not going to mention what I reviewed before, but when something else comes out and, you know, it's a little bit more expensive and maybe the sound isn't what you're thinking it's going to be. And you think it's going to be better than the previous unit and it might not be, <laughs> then, then I get a little disappointed but when products like this that I put into my car and they sound good and it has, you know, multiple, um, you can use this thing multiple different ways in your car, at home, you know, it's it's not super small, but it's still a dec decent enough size um, that you could attach it to your phone, right? So I did I did not show those things. Um, there's It actually comes with a little uh, uh, kind of like a, a, a plastic kind of, backing for this so when you hook it up to your phone you don't have to worry about the heat or having any marks or anything on your phone um there's like two different pieces and then there's one thing that you can use to attach your phone with it uh, i didn't show that in here um but it does come with that for those people that might want to use that but it's it's not super small but it's not giant either right you know what i mean so you could actually use this if you're going for a walk or whatnot and you got this thing attached to your phone uh, for guys that want to listen to your headphones and that type of thing, right? But for in the car, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff because like I said, you're probably going to hide this somewhere anyways uh, once you've got your settings set up for it. And uh, I mean, you can actually use the 3.5 out too with your auxiliary input um, in your vehicle. I never talked about that, but I did test that too. And uh, in my vehicle, it did a really good job because in my vehicle, I have what's called, uh, well, it's an interface for my vehicle, right? It's uh, Pack Audio's Amp Pro, and I have a Tosh Link output uh, going into my DSP on there. So when I actually connected this uh, to my unit, I actually had to turn the gain to low, right, instead of high, Um but when I did that and then I adjusted the volume, it actually sounded really good in my system. And that's another way to go. I didn't have any noise whatsoever when I did that as well. Everybody's vehicle is different because I've had people comment on my channel. Well, I'm getting noise with this product or that product. Well, it's a lot to do with your vehicle um, more, more so than the actual product, right? Because uh, I have a 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited X. And I've never really had any kind of noise problems at all. My my system's like ultra quiet. You can't hear anything in the background, right? Um, but then I got a pretty high-end system too. So that might be a little bit different too for some people. You know, if you have a little bit of a lower-end system, you might get a little bit more noise in your system. But I'm actually talking about like, uh, you know, ground loop noise, that type of thing, right? Um, some products, when you go analog out, you might get some of that kind of... Uh, noise if you're going auxiliary input and you're trying to charge the unit or whatnot i find that's when you actually get the ground loop noise uh when the unit's actually already charged i've never had any issues whatsoever in any of my vehicles um when the unit's you know when you're not charging it and you're just playing it 
You know, I'm talking about units that have a battery in it, right? So, so other than that, guys, I'll attach the specs uh, at the end of this vehicle or at the end of this video, I should say, and you guys can check the specs out um, as well. Um, I don't normally go over all the specs now because pretty much almost every unit that comes out these days all does pretty much everything for the most part, right? Um, but what we normally listen to in a vehicle is usually you know, between the 20, 24 and 192 for the most part. Um, there's not too many DSPs, if any out there, uh, that'll actually play like true DSD out there. Uh, a lot of people, you might be able to play it, but then it'll just convert it. Right. Um, but there's not too many DSPs that'll actually do actual DSD out there. It'll just downsample it. Right. So, like I said, the specs, all the specs and stuff will be at the end of this uh, this video. And other than that, um, I think, I think like once again, Fio brought out uh, a really good product that you can use in multiple different uh, ways. The only negative for the most part, the only negative is coaxial digital out. And it's been the negative on the M11 S as well not coming with the cable and it was another negative here having an app that doesn't work with apple in order to turn the coaxial digital output on right so i'm not going to harp on that because it is what it is just letting you guys know because if you do buy this unit um and you want to go coaxial digital out of it there's a there's a there's an issue right there but feel look at look at what smsl are doing right with a tiny little unit right it's not even that it's not very big at all and they got a full-size coaxial digital out as well as optical out i'm telling you right now at least include that with your daps and do a good job on it and you'll be ahead of all the other daps out there that's all you got to do put an optical out because there's a lot of people with like jail audio dsps um, all types of DSPs that only have optical out of it, right? Or I should say optical in. So if you put optical out, put full-size optical out, full-size coaxial digital out, right? And then do all the rest of the stuff that you normally do, right? Then you'll be good. But just make sure they're good, <laughs> right? Because once again, guys, not all coaxial digital outputs are the same. I don't care if you're on DYI mobile audio site and you got some professional telling you that it doesn't matter if it's a $50 unit or a $5,000 unit, they all sound the same. They don't. And obviously these people have never tested anything in their own vehicle before because if they did, they would know these units all these things sound different, right? Just like this sounds different than every other feel coaxial digital output that I've tested. They're all different. They all have different sound signatures to them, just like all the other outputs do, right? And um, if somebody tells you differently, just go test them in your car. You'll find out for yourself that they sound different, right? Um, and it's pretty easy to test, especially if, if if you're around the hundred dollar mark, uh, go test this, get the SM SL PO 100 pro and test that. And you'll see the differences, <laughs> but that's it guys. That's it for me. That was uh, kind of like my review on Fios Q11. Uh, excellent product, uh, especially for the price, right? Cause we always have to look at the price and, um, do the comparisons to other products that are in that price range. And, uh, I think, from what I've tested for an amp DAC, um, I think this is probably the best product to date that I would say that's under a hundred bucks, right? That does so many different things. So uh, I give it a thumbs up. I definitely uh, check it out, right? And especially if you're creating a budget system, um, this is a good starter point, right? It, it can do everything. As long as you have an Android device, in order to change the coaxial digital out. If you want to go that way, then that's fine, right? If you're if you're a budget, chances are you're not going to have a DSP that has differential 
uh, balanced inputs on it. So you're not going to be able to use the, the best connection on here, which is balanced, right? Um, but still, the coaxial digital output does a, does a decent job. And if you're in a budget system um, and you want to use this for, you know, strictly, you know, car and home use, then this does a good job coaxial digital out. And then you can use, you know, whatever you want with your headphones. Um, if you're strictly just wanting a coaxial digital output and you're not going to use anything for headphones, then definitely go with the SMSL PO100 Pro. And you know what? Why not buy both, right? And then compare them in your vehicle. And you tell me what you think in the comment section. All right, guys, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the video. Um, I got some exciting news that'll be coming shortly, right? I'm going to be changing up kind of a little bit on how um, I do some of the things going forward, right? So, but I think it's going to be pretty exciting uh, for people that are following me and, the, and then new people that are going to be following me. And uh, I'll be announcing that shortly. So anyways, guys, that's it for me. We'll see you on the next one.